You're standing at the precipice of a new era. AI is here, and its arrival is arguably more seismic than the birth of the internet itself. And unless you want to be the blockbuster to this era's Netflix and find yourself out of a job, it's time to start paying attention. So how do creators navigate these uncharted waters and make the most of this groundbreaking technology and not just survive, but thrive? Well, let's get into it. Artificial intelligence is here, and no, it's not in the form of Terminator coming for John Connor. It actually just wants to help you make better content. So after months of testing hundreds of tools, these are the AI tools that I've been using to drastically improve my productivity, decrease my time spent on repetitive tasks, and grow substantially as a creator. I'll show you which ones to use, how to best utilize them, and give some honorable mentions that are worth keeping an eye on. Okay, so the first one I wanna talk about is text to image generators. The primary ones that I've been playing around with and the ones that have sort of risen to the top are Dolly, Stable Diffusion, and Midjourney. In essence, these are AI models that take sort of natural language descriptions and generate digital images out of them. I say sort of natural because while these do take normal English words and turn them into images, there's certainly a level of syntax or prompt engineering that you need to learn in order to get them to output something that doesn't look like a pixelated Jackson Pollock painting of a rhino with 10 legs. I'm gonna link to a prompting guide as well as a negative prompt guide in the description that can help you get started. So I recommend reading through both of those before you generate your first image because a lot of these tools only give you a certain number of images to generate per day without subscribing to some paid service. Okay, so this is cool and all, but how would you actually use it as a creator? The first is thumbnail generation. With this generative AI, creators can simply input text that they want to represent, and then AI will generate a unique eye-catching thumbnail. You can also input a source image and then have it generate images around it, or even use something like Midjourney to create some element and then use Canva or Photoshop to arrange it around in your final thumbnail image. We also can use this generative AI as sort of a general initial sketch for storyboards based on a script or a summary. I actually used Dolly to help me create a storyboard for a client pitch, and while it was super bare bones at the time, I definitely think that I would be using this again. I've also had loads of creator friends use text to image generation in tandem with work with a designer to help speed up something like their logo design process. They generate a few images and mockups and then send these to designer as examples for what they're looking for. So if you do wanna get started with some of these, I recommend first starting out with Dolly. I find that the outputs can sort of look like they're a little bit cut and pasted together, but it's the easiest to use, it's free. Um, and then I also recommend a dumbed down version of Stable Diffusion, which is at leonardo.ai or lexica.art. These are much less customizable than Stable Diffusion itself, but they're free to try out and they output actually a pretty pleasing image without too much effort. Once you get the hang of things, I'd move over to something like Stable Diffusion or Midjourney. I'll just note that there is a little bit of a UI learning curve here because Stable Diffusion is open source, so there's a, a ton of disparate instances and you can even run it locally if you have an NVIDIA GPU. And then on Midjourney, it's actually all run through their Discord server. This has its pros and cons. On the plus side, you sort of have this live feed of everyone generating images so you can learn really quickly. But on the con side, it could just sort of get a little bit messy. Now, one additional concern with these tools is that they are actually using actual artists' images for their training data. Midjourney has even been caught outputting images that include the Getty Images watermark, which is certainly not a good look. Not to mention that these types of things could also make certain types of photography a little bit obsolete, or not just photography, all image creation really. These are all super interesting considerations, but I'm personally of the opinion that it's better to adopt the new technology than spend your effort complaining about how times have changed and back in my day. But I do know that a lot of people do have strong opinions on this, so I'd definitely love to hear what you think. Moving on from image creation, let's talk about the video editing tools that I've been using lately. As a general theme, what I'm seeing is that there are these smaller projects and companies that are popping up that develop this one neat little tool that's doing something like upscaling videos using AI or using AI-generated subtitles automatically. There's also the big guns like Adobe and Blackmagic that are taking notice of which ones of these smaller tools people are using and asking for, and then they're building them into their existing platforms. That said, there are still a few tools that I would consider trying out in the meantime. 
The first ones are GetMunch or Video. They are both roughly the same thing, which is that they take your long form content and automatically cut it down into short form content with text overlays for Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, you name it. Another one of my current favorites is Runway ML. It is a super cool platform that allows you to create a bunch of generative AI art stuff and do things like generate LUTs with only text. Something that really helps it stand out, however, is the ability to create and train your own custom models that are tailored to your needs and projects. And you can even upload a source video, feed it a text prompt, and it will animate your video using that text prompt. With their Gen 2 update, which is currently only in beta, they are even further expanding this and the technology is creating some insane animations. Something you could work on and something that I'm working on is actually splicing in this type of animation with normal videos. I've actually seen this guy, I think it's pronounced Malik on TikTok, who's doing super intriguing edits using this animation style without running something like Cinema 4D, for example. Another similar tool that is like this is Kyber, which is also worth checking out. Okay, so before we all get taken over by robot overlords and plugged into the matrix, let's focus on how we can have a army of little bots working for us with these more traditional tools. For the Premiere holdouts among you, there's actually quite a few cool AI features that are being integrated within Premiere. The first is Autopod, which is technically an external plugin, but it plugs directly into Premiere. Basically, all you need to do is set up a multi-cam sequence and Autopod will cut down the entire podcast automatically. Adobe also recently integrated text editing functions. You can generate a transcript from a video and then edit within the text itself. And it even has these really cool little like ellipses where you can see where you stop talking, you just edit those out and you're grooving. This is clearly Adobe undercutting something like Descript, which I had originally had in this video, but I feel like all of their most beloved tech is really being replaced quite quickly by traditional software. Speaking of larger companies listening to their customers, and creating great AI tools, let's chat about DaVinci Resolve for a second. If you haven't already made the switch to DaVinci Resolve, I am working on a how to switch to DaVinci Resolve video. So be sure to subscribe for that one because that's coming soon. And heck, you're gonna be saving so much time with all these other little AI buddies that we're talking about that you'll be able to watch all my other vids as well. So similar to Premiere with the new DaVinci 18.5 update, which is now in open beta, DaVinci has also added things like AI generated subtitles and text-based editing. To enable these AI subtitles, you just need to select a clip, then go to Timeline, Create Subtitles with Audio. This will generate a subtitle track, which you can then customize to whatever style you're looking to achieve. For the text-based editing, just come over to this little icon called Transcribe Audio, and it'll have a little think for a minute, and then it'll generate a full transcript of the video. Similar to Premiere, you can highlight and make edits directly in the text, but you can't yet edit out the dead space in your dialogue like Premiere can, but I do imagine that that would be coming soon. Another awesome feature added to the 18.5 beta is Superscale. Let's say you're editing 4K timeline with 4K video, but then one of your clips is filmed in 1080. <gasps> 1080. Well, all you gotta do is come over to the inspector and enable Superscale and then 2X Enhanced. It will then use AI to upscale your footage to 4K. Two more crazy AI features in the 18.5 Resolve beta are the new depth map and AI relight scene features. Features, effects, whatever. In the color tab under effects, you will want to search for depth map and then drag that onto a node. This creates a selection based on the depth from the camera. The AI relight feature takes that depth map functionality even further by allowing you to add it to a node and then you can relight the scene based on the position and strength of an AI generated light source. Okay, so now that we've talked about saving time with images and videos, let's spend some time talking about how you can become 10x more efficient in all the other areas of your creator business. For this, we're gonna be talking about the granddaddy of them all, ChatGPT. If you haven't already, I highly recommend upgrading to GPT-4. It's far more accurate, complex, and especially better for more analytical and creative content. I use ChatGPT to draft my email responses, reach out to new prospective clients, review contracts, brainstorm video ideas, do research. I have this tab open in my browser all day, every day. It's like my little intern, because until the day comes that robots put me in a tub of goo and plug me into the matrix, I want them doing my bidding for me. 
So let's look at some ways we can get better responses from GPT. And then for those who are feeling like GPT experts, we'll look at some ways that you can beef it up even further. The first is be very clear and specific with its instructions. Similar to text to image generators, ChatGPT is only as good as the prompt that is given. You need to be as detailed and prescriptive as possible. Ensure that your prompts are well-defined so that it understands your query and can better generate an accurate response. Rather than saying, what's a good YouTube title? Instead ask, I'm working on a YouTube video about blank. Here are three title options that I've come up with. Provide me with 20 more options that would make a viewer want to click to watch the video. One great thing about this second prompt example is that it provides GPT with more context as well. The more background that you can give it, the more it'll be able to provide you with a relevant and detailed answer. You'll also notice that this particular prompt was prescriptive in the length. By default, GPT will kind of just provide like a fairly succinct response to your prompt. But here in my instance, we've asked it for 20 more options. You could do this with word count. You could ask for it in a particular format, such as bullet points or a table or a list or something like that. My final pro tip for improving your GPT prompts is to praise the hell out of it and do a little bit of role playing. Remember, we're trying to get a leg up here on our future date with Cyber Scarlett Johansson. But in all seriousness, GPT does do a very good job of role playing. At the start of your prompt, for example, you could say something like, I want you to act like a successful social media consultant and then ask your question or provide ask for it to provide feedback to some work that you've already done. Okay, so now that you're a prompt wizard, Here's how we can take it one step further with some extensions. The first is web chat GPT. Yo, editor Kyle here. So since filming this, OpenAI actually added in a beta functionality for web browsing on GPT. You just do have to have GPT-4 GPT or GPT+. So now you just hit, click that drop down and you can do web browsing, which is great. The other big issue with ChatGPT is that it's confined to just the boxes of the ChatGPT interface. The good news is that you can solve this with the use ChatGPT extension. This gives you the ability to have ChatGPT as a companion with you wherever you are on the internet. You'll just need to sign in to ChatGPT, which is why having GPT-4 is considerably more useful here. Once you're signed in, you can press Command J to open up a little side window with ChatGPT, or you can highlight any text, right click it, and interact with it via ChatGPT. You can summarize, respond, revise, ask for takeaways or action items, or improve your writing. I use this to help me all the time with client emails, summarizing articles, revising my own writing. Now there are a few instances of larger companies building this type of tool into their existing products. For example, Notion is building in Notion AI, which can do much of the same things as this. But after testing it for about a month, I actually didn't really find that it was using like GPT-4 level output. So that might be one of the constraints on that one. Google has also just announced that they are integrating all of their AI tools directly into their workplace suite. So Gmail, Google Docs, that type of thing. As of the recording of this video, it is still in closed beta, but if their annual developer event is any indication, AI, 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 generative AI, generative AI. I'd imagine that we should see Google making some serious waves here. These are the ones that I'm currently paying attention to, but I'm curious what tools you've heard of or what you've tried that I haven't talked about here. Maybe drop those ones in the comments. And if you like this video, play thumb with the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.